Hey guys, I wanted to show you this incredible um, FET simulator for solving equations. It is called the Equality Explorer. We're actually going to utilize in this sense, we're going to go ahead and utilize the solve it, which is generally like the game or the assessment at the end. We're actually going to use that to solve one step equations, two step equations, or two step with variables on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and hit solve it. And here I have a problem x plus 2 equals 26. I can see the modeling down here. I can see where the x's are represented and, of, I mean, well, clearly the variable, and I can see where the constants are represented. I like this snapshot feature mainly because it helps me keep tra track of steps, and that's going to make more sense when we get into more complex equations. But I'm going to go here. I have x plus 2 minus 26. In this case, notice misconceptions are kind of low, and in one step, like add, subtract, kind of additive equation, they know what to do. But we're going to get into misconceptions in a minute. So the kids might say, okay, I see here, this is kind of what I would call complex. We need to simplify that. We can do that by subtracting two. The best part about the simulator is it actually models that it's happening to both sides. And then there's my correct answer. So on to the next question. Now, I'm not really a big fan of the fractions yet, yet. This would be like multiplying by six. I'm not a huge fan of this just yet, and that's you're going to get there, but I want to really want to clear up some misconceptions. The cool thing about this is, if and this is me skipping, that this could be a misconception if they're trying to, let's say they're trying to divide or multiply by one sixth. Maybe they're trying to divide by one sixth, which is the same as multiplying by six, but if that's what they're trying to do, they're going to notice they can't get to a fraction here. There's no way to do that. So what's my alternative? Think about what the reciprocal of 1 6 is, which is 6, and then you multiply by 6. So that could be a discussion why there's no fraction here. But that is one of the more complex misconceptions. I want to go to the like basic misconceptions. So this isn't one. Yeah, perfect. This is the exact question. So what's a misconception here? Our students see negative 8x equals negative 200, and they think I want to add 8. We're going to go ahead and show that. And when I add 8, now I have a problem that looks like this. I should have snapshotted this in the beginning. But now I have a problem that looks like this. Here's my original. Here's what I currently have. I have now made this more complex. Of course, the whole point in solving equations is to simplify. So we don't want it to be more complex. So at this point, we can undo what we did. So we added 8, so I'm going to subtract 8 get us back here, and then have the discussion about what operation is actually taking place here, multiplication, how would you do the inverse operation, you would do division. So we divide. Now let's say we simply divide by 8. Here we are again. Now we have a problem that says negative x equals negative 25. This leads us into another discussion about the inability for x to be negative. It cannot be negative. How can we undo that? That would give us the option to divide by negative 1, or if you want to take it back, undo, so multiply by negative 8, and then divide by the negative 8. Um, excuse me, I said multiply by 8, but this gives us the correct answer. So that's your level 1. <clears throat> excuse me. Go on to level 2. Here you're looking at your two steps. I love this too because the misconception, again, you may have um, that negative coefficient where they try to add, things like that. What I love here is if I make the mistake of trying to divide first, so let's say I want I, I take the 6x, and of course one thing may be minus 6, but we've already talked about that misconception, so let me do the divide by 6. I divide by 6, watch what happens. Now, again, I'm comparing these two. I have not made this easier. So therefore, I did something wrong, let me undo it, and go back to the drawing board. What could I do? Well, again, here I see a mix of constants and variables. So Here's where I might want to discuss starting. Subtracting 5 from both sides. And when I do that, again, now I've made this much more simplistic. Then I can do divided by 6 and get the correct answer. Of course, last but not least, yay! On level 4, let me get a better question. You are going to get your two-step variables on both sides. And it will walk you through all of these different pieces. So in this level four, we have 
two step equations with variables on both sides. And we know through teaching, we have asked kids, students to do a multitude of things. Maybe they address this or address here or address here or here. This gives you the ability to address whatever you want and to see it happening to both sides. But one thing I do like is if I take this up all the way up to 10, I can't go any higher. So I know I'm not going to be messing with this 90. That's a good thing because we don't really want our students to be doing the harder part of the math. The subtracting 90 from both sides would be more complicated. Where here, if I could just subtract 6 from both sides, now I'm going to see that I have simplified part of this equation. Now I might look here and try to figure out what I want to do. Maybe, again, you think, oh, I'm going to subtract 84 from both sides. Well, I can't get there, so that doesn't work. What if I see this negative 6? Again, I could add 6. I add 6, I'm back here. That doesn't work. Well, what if I divide by negative 6? Say I get to that part. Now I'm here, and I'm stuck. So now I'm looking at, wait, I have x over here, I have x over here. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't work for me. Um, this allows you to try something different. Maybe you're going to add 6. And Sorry, I'm trying to get here. I'm going to add the 6x. Well, when I do that, now I have nothing over here. How am I supposed to solve this? So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways for them to work through this. I'm going to go ahead and do the correct next action or another action that will work or get us to a more simplified equation where I'm here. And this now starts to look familiar to me, where I can divide by the negative 7. So there's a lot of different ways that you can work this to get to that finalized answer or that finalized simplified equation by seeing all of those misconceptions that kind of can stand in your way.